Huh? He's joined. Yeah, joined. Huh? Yeah, joined. Once he joins, we will get started. Oh, good morning, good afternoon. Good morning and good afternoon. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Suresh. Good morning, Dr. Yeah, good morning and uh, welcome. Of course. As far as we are concerned, it's good afternoon. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> First time when we meet, we can always say good morning, not an issue. Yeah, that's right. You know, we are meeting here. <laughs> so, good afternoon, Dr. Kiran Kumar. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Very good. I think yeah. we all have joined. I think we will get started. Maybe I yeah, will request. Sure. Uh, Gauri Shankar to give a little briefing, then we will yeah. go ahead with the actual program. Okay. 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 Uh, good morning, uh, sir. Uh, it's my real honor to have the initial uh, points in this event. Uh, it's it's really a wonderful uh, event in the sense. This is one of the <laughs> unique events. Basically, mm -hmm. I, I used to deal with the international space agencies for many activities, but this is the first time we are doing something internationally, but for our Indian community. So it all started with the uh, uh, Science India Foundation to our chairman ISRO in Oman. But it got the real uh, momentum when uh, Dr. B. N. Suresh visited Riyadh and then started everything mm -hmm. falling in place. And I'm really happy that the, this particular event was okay, so close. Okay, hear anything from that in mobile? Mobile, Mr. Rai, there are also. Our daughter, you don't say. You don't say. Okay. Go ahead. The, this all started uh, falling in place in a very short time, and uh, I, I really thank the coordination from uh, Mr. Biju and also our uh, uh, SIF uh, colleague. And uh, uh, we are uh, one day, it, it's an important event, and a big uh, speaker is going to be there. And then the talk is going to be introduced <laughs> by uh, one of our former chairman, who is also a member of the Space Commission as of now. And uh, the naming of this particular uh, event, that the Space Club, what was proposed by uh, Mr. Biju, we could not take the approval uh, in uh, time. Uh, however, you know, uh, this could be the starter and then we will certainly uh, take to our government and see that the right name is uh, given for this initiative, uh, whatever we are, ISRO is doing with the Science India Foundation. With this, I, I really be honored to be part of this and then I hand over to uh, our colleague from SIF for starting the event. Thank you. Very good morning. A very warm welcome to all. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to the first space event session organized by Indian Space Research Organization and Science India Forum KSA. This event marks the inauguration of a space program specially designed by ISRO for the expatriate students, a historic initiative bringing the wonders of space exploration to students on foreign shows for the first time. I welcome the chief guest, Dr. A.S. Kiran Kumar, former ISRO chairman, Dr. B.N. Suresh, Chancellor IIST, Embassy official, Mr. Dinesh Setia, First Secretary, Information, Culture and Education, today's lead speaker, Dr. Anil Bharatwaj, Director, Physical Research Laboratory, ISRO, Mr. Anwar Sadat, Higher Board Member, KSA, Mr. Biju, President, SIF, KSA, school representatives from the Embassy of India, respected principals from various schools around KSA, science coordinators, teachers, students, SIF officials, and all our distinguished guests who have joined us today. A very warm welcome once again. To commence this remarkable event, it is my honor to invite Dr. B.N. Suresh, an esteemed aerospace scientist who played an instrumental role in organizing this entire program. He is currently the Chancellor of the Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology and is a professor at ISRO headquarters. During his career in the Indian Space Research Organization, spanning around four decades, Dr. Suresh had enough opportunity in partaking and shaping the space programs as well as in guiding it from a pivotal positions. He contributed to the development of Indian launch vehicles 
and the space capsule recovery experiments, as well as research and development management. Dr. Suresh has received several honors, including the Padma Bhushan in 2013 and Padma Shri in 2002. Welcome, sir, and over to you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, already Dr. Gauri has given the uh, briefing on how it all started. Uh, sometime in the month of February, I had uh, an opportunity to visit uh, Riyadh and also interact with the Science India Foundation of Saudi Arabia. And also I got an opportunity to uh, visit some three or four schools and then interact with them. What I found them, and they are all Indian schools coming under the umbrella of the Indian Embassy. There are more than 10 schools, uh, international schools coming under the uh, Embassy of um, uh, India. And I think it is headed by the ambassador, the governing council. And this idea was broached how we can really shake hands with the Science India Foundation and ISRO. And they wanted to create what is termed as the Space Club. And of course, I came back and discussed with uh, uh, Dr. Gauri Shankar, who is uh, the Director of International Relations. He, he took it up with the right agencies, including Chairman Isro. And within a short time, we got the approval. And of course, we had one brief meeting with uh, our SIF friends uh, over video. And then we concluded that let us organize at least uh, one such meeting quarterly. And to start with, at least for one more year, we will organize this kind of interaction quiz, which doesn't cost both the sides much, because let us make sure that the whole program goes in the right manner. And uh, we decided we will have the one such uh, interaction sometime before the end of uh, September, number one. Number two, also we requested them to discuss with the concerned principals and schools and suggest an area related to space. Uh, we were extremely happy to hear that the, they were all interested in the space exploration, excitements of space exploration. When that was informed to us, uh, we also decided in each such meeting, we will have a very, very senior person as the chief guest and he will address for about 10 minutes so that everybody will come to know overall what is happening about ISRO. We may not be able to talk for length. And on the subject matter, we will always invite a specialist and this time space exploration, which is being projected. So we thought as a chief guest, we can't have any other person than Dr. Kiran Kumar. He was the earlier uh, former chairman ISRO, presently member space commission. More than anything, I would say he is an expert in the international, in the, the, the space exploration, starting from Chandrayaan 1 to 3, Mars mission, Aditya and many more, particularly mission operations and other things and the payload science portion, all in all. That's why we requested him. I must really thank him for agreeing uh, to really give us the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the chief guest lecture uh, for in the beginning. Then also I must mention to you that uh, Dr. Anil Bharadwaj is the director of physical research laboratory. He's again a pioneer and stalwart in the international exploration. You can't get any person other than uh, Dr. Anil Bharadwaj, we requested him, uh, he, he, he readily accepted and I must really convey my sincere thanks to him. And with this, we will get started. And also I must uh, uh, convey to our uh, principals from Saudi Arabia, when I interacted with the students, they are all really very bright and this is a good opportunity. And we only hope that you would get good questions from your end so that uh, the the uh, Dr. Anil Bharadwaj will be able to really give the uh, corresponding answers. With these viewers, uh, let me welcome all of you. And uh, before I conclude, we also have committed that we will have one more uh, program before the end of this year. That will be a space quiz. Maybe somewhere in the end of October or beginning of November, we will have one meeting and uh, sort of give flesh and blood to that program so that next activity also gets formed up. So with this, uh, I hand it over back to the organizers. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Next, I invite the chief guest for today's session, Dr. A.S. Kiran Kumar, an Indian space research scientist and former chairman of Indian Space Research Organization. During his tenure 
at ISRO during 2015 to 18, Dr. Kiran Kumar has made immense contributions to the design and development of electro optical imaging sensors for airborne low earth orbit and geostationary orbit satellites, starting from Bhaskara TV payload to the Mars orbit mission payloads. He has also made significant contributions to evolving the observation strategy encompassing land, ocean, atmospheric, and planetary studies. Dr. Kumar's exceptional leadership in developing key scientific instrument for Chandrayaan-1 and Mangalyaan mission has left an indelible mark on India's space program. He has been conferred with honoris causa and doctorate of science by 18 different academic institutions, and in recognition of his contribution, he was conferred Padma Shri Award by the President in 2014. Welcome, sir, and over to you. Thank you very much, and thank you for this opportunity to speak to our uh, Indian fraternity at uh, UAE. And in fact, I remember last year, I also had an opportunity to visit some of the schools there and then interact with them. So thank you very much for this opportunity. And if you look at India's space program and how it has evolved, I'll just touch upon briefly how it started itself. So way back in um, the early 60s, India started its space program by bringing in sounding rockets and then getting it assembled at Tumba and launching it from there. And for doing this at that time, in fact, uh, the chief uh, scientist who was involved, Professor Vikram Saravai, had to actually convince the fishermen in that course that to conduct these experiments, if you allow us to do it, one day the country will benefit. So what India was able to do is demonstrate to the fishermen across the coastline that building a launch vehicle, sending a satellite into space and observing the color of the ocean and through that color, identify chlorophyll and through the chlorophyll, put chain as a fish and where in the ocean a fisherman can go for fishing. In fact, this act, we, you know that uh, we have a seven and a half thousand kilometer long coastline and millions of fishermen depend on their livelihood for catching the fish. So India was able to show provide to a person who does not know reading or writing the most advanced technology of building a satellite, launch vehicle, taking it to space, and then providing specific information. So apart from that, India developed its own launch vehicles, satellites, and application. And in the recent past, you have also seen how space exploration, which humanity is taking up, because in a way, after conquering land, water and airspace, humanity is really looking at, can we conquer space itself? Space is becoming the fourth frontier and humanity is looking at space tourism, space adventure, space exploration, space exploitation. In all this, how the space activity is moving. And today you are seeing not only nation state, but also large number of private companies entering into space activity. And in terms of space exploration, Humanity is very much interested because every night when we look at the sky, we wonder what is this star, what are the planets, and is it possible for us to go and reach there? So what India also has done, if you see, it did its first Chandrayaan program in 2008. While by that time, man had already landed on the moon, Indian space programs Chandrayaan-1 actually gets the credit for discovering the presence of water molecule and also the process of water molecule formation on moon, the discovery credit goes to this, which only shows that in science and technology domain, it is never too late. You can always make a difference and you can find something which others have not done up to now. And it is such a thing which inspires you. And then beyond that, of course, India did its own Chandrayaan 2 and 3 programs. You saw last year how India was able to actually land its Vikram lander, and then Pragyan rover on the region of moon where nobody else had gone up to that point of time. Not only were we able to land successfully there, but also do an in-situ observation using rover. And I'm sure uh, Prof. Anil Bhardwaj is going to talk something more about that. Only what I'm trying to bring to you is that it's possible to do many of these space exploratory activities, even when your resources are not very high, provided 
you make sure you put in the requisite effort and you are also aware that india became the first country to achieve in its maiden attempt reaching mars and this mars mission if you look at it is such a unique thing the satellite which was launched on the 5th of november 2013 the task cut out for the satellite was travel a distance of about 600 million kilometers over a 10 month period and then on a specific day and time 24th of september 2014 morning 7:30 am you imagine in space a 50 kilometer cube and this satellite after traveling for 10 months and uh, 600 million kilometers at that second it had to be inside that cube then only you could actually make the satellite get into the mars orbit and if all that you can visualize an object which is at such a far distance from you if you have to communicate and if you have to control with it you need to build a, the antenna system and then you also need to build a tremendous autonomous capability to the vehicle because when it is at such distances the signal takes quite a bit of time to travel we all know that sunlight takes 8 minutes to reach us and when the mars is on the other side of the solar system it almost takes 13 to 14 minutes for the command we said to reach there so you can find out that after you give a command it takes almost half an hour for you to find out whether what you have done has happened or not many of us when we start our computer will feel start feeling fidgety because it takes few hundred milliseconds more to boot up and then you can imagine the person sitting on the console how he will be feeling after the command he has given it takes so much time for him to know what has happened but why i am telling you all this is this is the kind of actually difficulties that exist when you are operating in space programs and exploration of space is something human being has always been looking at and today you have seen a large number of private companies whether it is elon musk or jeff bezos virgin galactic or many others and who are actually look at transporting humans from ground to the space station you also had the recent episode of uh, sunita williams being taken by boeing and then facing some difficulties but then these are all part of the human endeavor to grow and go beyond planet earth visit the nearby celestial bodies and over a period of time generate enough expertise and capacity so that not only you learn how to live in space but also find out what you can do if you see india itself is moving ahead it had its um, chandrayaan program where we landed on moon last year and then recently the government has also cleared that you will have a sample return mission from moon and then by 2035 we will have our own space station and by 2040 we expect to land indian astronauts on the surface of moon and bring them back safely and if that is going to happen by 2040 moon is going to become a place where it can be a future observatory from where you can look at earth and also look at space and moon can become a place for habitat and moon can also become a place for as a stepping stone for traveling beyond that means on moon you will have facilities if whatever water is found if you are able to get it in sufficient quantity you can also generate fuel from that and use that fuel for actually firing rockets and move further so in all this the exploration of space provides such a tremendous opportunity because taking life outside the planet earth provides huge challenge in various activities and india is in a way really gearing up for all this and the recent um, approvals from the government on many of these programs makes the task of the next generation of students and then researchers across the country those who are studying outside india they will have opportunity not only to contribute to this if they are coming back or working here or even working outside so this is an exciting time for space exploration activity in the country and india has already demonstrated that even though your resources could be limited you can make sure that using 
taking access to whatever technology that is available, you can identify problems and solve them in a manner which is very different from what rest of the world has done. And in this manner, showcase to the world also that it is possible to do many things. In fact, the way India has been able to make use of its uh, launch vehicle, which can put only a certain limited weight with a certain velocity. We have already shown the missions like Moon or even uh, Mars, and also what was done recently, Aditya mission, where you are taken a satellite orbit, an imaginary point between Earth and Sun, and then one face of the satellite constantly looking at Sun, making observation, and then providing data to Earth through its antenna systems. And a lot more exciting things are going to happen in the coming years and in the coming decades. And opportunities like this, where we can expose to the next generation to the various activities that is happening in the country and the kind of challenges that are going to be there in space exploration. Because exploration is the human nature. Probably you would have heard somebody telling, why do you want to climb Mount Everest? He said, because it is there, I want to climb Mount Everest. So similarly, why do you want to go to moon? Because it is there, I want to go to moon. So like that is a human nature and human tendency to explore things. And this desire of exploring brings in a tremendous opportunity because you have to create newer technological capabilities and those technological capabilities build on what has already been done. And that is where the next generation has tremendous opportunity. So let me compliment uh, both ISRO and uh, Science India Forum UAE for conceiving of this kind of a concept where the students in these regions can be exposed to what is happening in India in terms of the space exploration and giving them an opportunity to know more about it and also in some ways contribute to not only India's progress, but also humanity's progress in understanding space. Because in any case, space is going to be an integral part of human life in the coming decades and centuries. So let me compliment once again all the team for conceiving of this idea and wish all the students listening to this program a great success in their own effort of understanding what's happening and how they can contribute to the future of humanity on this uh, universe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Next, I invite Mr. Dinesh Setia, who serves as the esteemed first secretary of information, culture and education at the Embassy of India, fostering cultural and educational ties for the felicitation speech. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, first of all, I, I recognize the kind presence of respected Dr. Kiran Kumar, uh, former chairman ISRO, uh, respected Dr. B. N. Suresh, Chancellor IIST, Dr. Anil Bhardwaj, uh, Mr. Biju, Mr. Anwar Sadeh, my colleague, and uh, principals of International Indian Schools in Riyadh. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much for inviting me uh, to this uh, virtual meeting. And it's really fascinating to hear Dr. Kiran Kumar. Uh, well, uh, Embassy of India was uh, pleased to connect the Science India Forum with ISRO as we feel that uh, space club in our schools in Saudi Arabia uh, is a good initiative uh, which will benefit students. And I appreciate efforts of Science India Forum in this direction. Uh, I'm sure ISRO's guidance, capacity building programs, etc., uh, will be found to be uh, much useful by students and teachers. Uh, it was heartening to know that uh, Chairman ISRO was also on board on this uh, and interaction once in a quarter, as mentioned by Dr. B. N. Suresh, uh, I feel will be <clears throat> quite useful and we'll see how, uh, how uh, this evolves going forward. Uh, well, we all know, I mean, India has made uh, remarkable strides in space exploration and there is no denying the fact. ISRO has launched hundreds of satellites for, <clears throat> excuse me, various countries uh, demonstrating its 
cost effective launch capabilities uh, whether it is mangalyaan or chandrayaan or even efforts such as gaganyaan mission uh, these achievements highlight india's growing prowess in space technology and its commitment to scientific advancement and international collaboration in this field so uh, in this context uh, it is imperative that our students get an exposure to what india has achieved in space exploration such an exposure will uh, not only transform our students to be more educated and more informed in this field uh, but i feel that this will also inculcate a proud feeling that india is a force to reckon with in space exploration therefore we are glad that isro has very kindly agreed to interact with our students in saudi arabia so uh, our very best wishes to schools uh, i won't take uh, more time as other distinguished speakers will share their invaluable invaluable insights on this issue so i hand over floor back to you madam thank and you, thank you thank you thank you respected uh, dr kiran kumar thank you dr bn suresh uh, thank you uh, dr bhardwaj and uh, all colleagues uh, uh, in science india forum and principals for this meeting and thank you for inviting me thank you very much Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your words. Now I invite Mr. Buj Biju Mullasheri Gangadharan, the National President of Science India Forum (KSA), a relentless advocate for the growth of science education. He is a cloning consultant for Date Palms and Director Technical Manager of Clone Biotech, a part of Al Raji Saudi Group Agriculture. His unwavering commitment to Science India Forum is evident. in his tireless work for his this organization over to you sir excuse me sir you are mute i think yeah uh, thank you dr remida uh respected chief guest dr s kiran kumar former isro chairman iast chancellor dr bn suresh sir first secretary in the embassy mr dinesh sethia today's lead speaker dr anil bharadwaj higher board member mr anwar sada school principals school management committee members chief officials teachers and dear students welcome to the inaugural isro sif space event session at indian international schools in saudi arabia so we are thrilled to kick off this exciting journey into the world of uh, space exploration and science today we will explore the incredible achievements of isro engage in hands on activities and inspire the next generation of space enthusiast this event is a fantastic opportunity to learn collaborate and ignite our passion for the universe i would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to dr b n suresh sir for his invaluable support and guidance dr suresh has consistently encouraged us to strive for the excellence and his commitment has played a pivotal role in establishing space clubs in indian international schools across saudi arabia i stand here today as a proud saif official to express my heartfelt thanks to former isro chairman dr kiran kumar your inspiring presence and insight insightful words have truly elevated this occasion sir thank you for sharing your wisdom and motivating us to reach for the stars on behalf of isf saif i would like to sincerely thank mr dinesh sethia first secretary information culture and education from the indian embassy for gracing this occasion with his presence your support and encouragement means a lot and great deal to the sif kaise and we truly appreciate your commitment to foster educational initiatives in the kingdom I must thank our lead speaker, Dr. Anil Bharadwaj, for joining us today. So we are truly honored to have you with us, and we eagerly look forward to hearing your insights on this topic. We are deeply grateful to Mr. Anwar Sada, a member of Higher Board of Education, for his invaluable guidance and unwavering support throughout the formation of Space Club. His insights and encouragements have been instrumental in helping us to establish. 
strong foundation for the club. With a deep sense of appreciation, I would like to thank all school principals and from Indian international schools for your immense collaboration and cooperation with Science India Forum and its activities. Together, we are making a meaningful impact in the field of education. Let me brief um, you about our activities of Science India Forum in KSA. So we are a non-profit voluntary organization that decide to serve society through the advance of science and technology. Our parental organization, National Science Movement, believes in promoting and popularizing Indian science for the service of society. Our main activities in the kingdom includes the Inter-School Science Talent Search Examination Shastra Pratibha Contest, Conducting Children's Science Congress, Science Gala for Recognizing Children's Achievements, Research and Development Institution Visits, Celebrating Different Technological Days, etc. In all GCC countries, Science India Forum have chapters and we used to conduct mega events like the International Ayush Conference and exhibitions in collaboration with the Ministry of Ayush Government of India. In KSA, we have chapters in Riyadh, Dammam, and Jubail region. In the kingdom, we work with 10 Indian international schools under the patronage of Indian Embassy, intending to initiate the space club activities. We plan to extend these activities to the private school as well, encouraging a broader engagement with science and technology. After this lecture session, as uh, right now Dr. Suresh pointed out, subsequently, before the end of 2024, another quiz program on space topics by ISRO can be planned in a virtual mode. Science India Forum KSA will serve as a bridge between ISRO and Indian international schools in the kingdom. As the subject of space is new among these schools, a basic level of space technology could be fine to start with. Advanced aspects like hands-on training could be considered in the later stages. Joint activities under space clubs could be evolved progressively over time. I sincerely appreciate everyone for your presence and valuable insights contributed greatly to our discussions and future planning for the full-fledged functioning of space clubs in KSA. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Next, I invite the lead speaker for today's session, Dr. Anil Bharadwaj, the Director of Physical Research Laboratory at ISRO. An Indian astrophysicist, Dr. Bharadwaj's pioneering research in planetary atmosphere has earned him global recognition. <clears throat> and his insight today promised to be truly inspiring. His primary research field is planetary and space sciences and solar system exploration. He has made outstanding contributions in the field of solar system X-ray astronomy, including discovery of X-rays from the rings of Saturn and X-ray flares from Jupiter and Saturn, and theoretically modeling of aurora and air glow emissions and photochemistry in planetary upper atmosphere and ionosphere and comets. He was awarded ISRO Team Excellence Award for Chandrayaan-1 Science and Mission in 2008 and ISRO Merit Award in 2012. In 2024, he has received the coveted Dvikram Sarabhai Medal of Coast Park and the International Academy of Astronautics Basic Science Section Award. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Namaskar. Kemcho. Kambagari. Adabas. Satyakal. Rade Rade. A very good morning and good afternoon to all the principals, teachers, and students assembled who are listening to me and to this program. Thanks to Dr. Suresh, Dr. Kiran Kumar, Dr. Biju, Shri Dinesh Satya for addressing and setting up the stage for this today's event. It is certainly going to be a big breakthrough in terms of transferring the information to our students in Saudi. So I'm going to make a brief presentation of how things are happening with respect to space exploration within the country. And uh, I will mostly use a lot of pictures to depict you and to impress upon you what kind of challenges comes up when we do this kind of explorations and what kind of science results have come out. So let me just share my slides to see how it works out. Please confirm if you are able to see it properly. 
I hope you can see the slides. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Yes, sir. And there is no issue with respect to the presentation. Everything is seen. Right. So I will be talking about Indian space exploration. I hope you can see the slides and hear to me. Please confirm. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Very much. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. And in this slide, you are also seeing a lot of missions of India, including Chandrayaan 1, Chandrayaan 2, Chandrayaan 3, Mangalyaan, which I'm going to talk about. But uh, let me begin by telling that uh, the whole space program in the country in India started under the leadership of Dr. Sarabhai. At PRL, from where I'm talking to you now, PRL stands for Physical Science Laboratory. And that is why PRL is called as the cradle of space research in India, because whole space activity in India started with Dr. Sarabhai in PRL in the year 1947 when we became independent. So whether I talk about the rocketry program, the satellite program, the ballooning program, everything is started under his leadership. And in this photograph, which you are able to see here, you are seeing Dr. Kalam standing next to Dr. Sarabhai. And in the back, you are also seeing Dr. Madhavan Nair, who later on became the chairman of the Secretary Department of Space. And even the first rocket launch, which took place from Thumba, in the year 1963 on 21st of November, carried experiment which are developed in PRL. So PRL is uh, largely doing space science and space research in all the domains starting from the first rocket launch in 1963. Now, when you talk about uh, PRL, and you must be seeing this logo of PRL very often in my slides, and you may be wondering what does actually mean. So you are able to see one circle with a dot in the center, and this is the symbol of the sun. On the other side, you are seeing a circle with the cross in the center, and this is a symbol for the earth. And now you have two circles, semicircles, and a big circle engulfing it. Now, if you want to translate what it really means, the logo of PRL, it means PRL research encompasses the earth, the sun, Emerge in the fields and radiations, reaching from and to infinity, all that men's curiosity and intellect can reveal. So essentially, the research domain of PRL starts from core of the earth going to the end of universe. And in the bottom, you are seeing the four campuses of PRL. We have two campuses in Ahmedabad. That is the main campus from where I'm talking to you right now. We have a campus about five kilometers from this place, which is Thaltesh campus. And then we have an observatory in Udaipur in the middle of the lake, that is the Fatasagar Lake, which is a solar observatory. And then we have an observatory in Mount Abu, which are basically telescopes to look at celestial bodies, stars, AGNs, galaxies, and comets and planets, which is in Mount Abu. Now, when you talk about uh, the solar system, and I want to give you a brief before I actually go to the exploration program. If you look at this slide, you will see that there are eight planets in our solar system. The four inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, were very small in size. And then in outer part of solar system, that is Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, they are much bigger in size. In addition to this, the inner planets, that is Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, are called rocky planets or planets which have surfaces, whereas the outer planets are called gas giants or icy giants because they don't have surface to land. They have atmosphere and straight away oceans. In addition to this, we have small objects like asteroids, comets, and then Pluto, which you are seeing over here, has now come in the category of dwarf planet or minor planet. And then we have other planets beyond the orbit of Pluto, like Huma, Mekmek, Eris, and things like that. Now, if you talk about these four inner planets, that is Earth, Venus, you will say they are sister planets. Earth and Venus are roughly same size. Mars is roughly half, Mercury one third. But when you compare that with Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and of course, the Jupiter is the biggest planet of solar system, Earth comes at number five. But how does they compare with Sun? You can see over here. Oops. Yeah. And now you see where is Earth? It is a small dot in front of Sun. And on this small dot, now you can imagine where India or Saudi Arabia is, and then where is your city, and then your school, and yourself. So we are actually very, very small compared to the size of the biggest uh, planet or the sun, which is the head of the solar system. 
Now, in addition to this, we have also satellites, which are called natural satellites or moons. And if you compare this slide and see that Ganymede, which is a satellite of Jupiter, is the biggest, Titan is second largest, and our Earth's moon, which you call, you know, the Chandamama, the moon, is the fifth largest satellite of our solar system. But you see here Mercury, which is even smaller than Ganymede and Titan, or even Pluto, which is even smaller than many other natural satellite in our solar system. That means we have a large variety of objects present in our solar system. We also note that there is an asteroid belt, which is a belt between Mars and Jupiter, and there are a very large number of these asteroids. But they are not very dangerous unless until they come very close to the Earth. Cirrus is the largest of it, which is something like 1,000 kilometer in diameter, and it contains almost like one third of the mass. But these asteroids have very different sizes. For example, here you see, this is called, called Ida or Ida, and it has a small moon. You see over here, 1.4 kilometer. This itself is like 50 kilometer body. And you can see the craters on the asteroid uh, surface. So, and looks like a potato shape, right? So these asteroids are very irregular shape bodies and they also can have their own small satellites. Now, let me talk about uh, the planetary exploration program in the country and start with the lunar exploration. And Dr. Kiran Kumar did just mention that we started with it uh, in 2008 with the Chandrayaan 1, continued with the Chandrayaan 2 in 2019, and then continued on to Chandrayaan 3 mission in 2023. And I'll be talking a little bit more into details of this, but I will also cover the Mangalyaan, that is the Mars Orbiter Mission of India, and a little bit about the Aditya Alon, and subsequently I will talk about what is going to happen in the future. So when you look at the planetary exploration program, starting with the lunar exploration program Chandrayaan, Chandra means moon, Yaan means spacecraft, and that's how the word Chandrayaan has come. It was launched on 22nd of October 2008. We reached moon in 16 days on 8th of November, carrying 11 experiments on board. And three of them were going for the first time for any planetary exploration. All these 11 experiments are shown over here in more, more detail. And I was directly involved with an instrument called SARA over here. But on the top, you are able to see a gray box which is called MIP or Moon Impact Probe. And this was released from the mother spacecraft, that is Chandrayaan 1, to land into the south pole of the moon. And it did land it, making the first landing from India, the main med object, on 14th of November 2008 at 2036 Indian time. And 14th of November, you know very well, right? 14th of November is celebrated as Children's Day, right? the Prime Minister, first Indian Prime Minister, Pandit Nehru's birthday. And that's how this was a gift from India to the children that India has implanted its flag onto the lunar surface. This mission has brought a lot of accolades. And as Dr. Kiran Kumar was mentioning, that it discovered water on the moon. Till that time, we are not knowing that water exists on the moon. But Chandrayaan-1 mission told us that water exists on the moon, it is on the surface, beneath the surface, and above the surface. We also validated lunar magma hypothesis, that means how the moon got formed. We discovered mini magnetosphere. We discovered uh, volcanic activities in the recent past, like 10 or 100 million years, and a very detailed study about the plasma properties, how the interaction of the solar wind takes place. And all these are detailed in more than 240 scientific publications. And some of them actually made the cover pages of various international journals like Science, which is the most popular and most famous journal, or Geophysical Research Letter, where we talk about discovery of water or discovery of mini magnetosphere. Now, let me go to the Mangalyaan or the Indian Mass Orbiter Mission or MOM in short. I don't know how many kids call their mother as mom, right? Nowadays, all the kids don't call their mother as mama or ma. They call mom, mom kya ho hai? what's happening mom, right? So we have sent Indian mom to Mars. And in the bottom, you are seeing the three major element of animation, the rocket, which take the spacecraft into space, 
the spacecraft itself and the big dish which is required to communicate with the spacecraft. Now this mission which was launched on 5th of November 2023 reaching Mars 10 months later on 24th of September 2024 carrying five experiments on board was planned for six months but it lasted for eight years. But not only that, it made India the first country in the world to have the successful insertion of an orbiter around the Mars in the first flight. So that was a very important challenge which was achieved by India. And this mission carried five experiments on board. You are seeing this different experiments like Lyman Alpha probe, Mars color camera, methane sensor for Mars, or thermal imaging spectrometer and MENCA, where I was directly involved as a PI, which is stand for Mars Exospheric Neutral Composition Analysis. Now, this mission has given us a lot of new data because it worked for eight years. One Mars year is roughly twice Earth year. So that means four Martian year data we have got. And what you're seeing here on the screen is the image taking from far off of the whole disk of the Mars. And you can see it changing in different seasons because Mars has seasons which are much more dramatic than the planet Earth. So in the top, you are seeing the ice formation in the polar regions, both in North and South. You also see very clearly this ice uh, caps in the polar regions. The white patches which you are all seeing are images taken by the Mars color camera on the Indian Mars mission. We also got information about Phobos and Deimos. These are the two small satellites, natural satellites of moon, and they have been imaged very well. And we now know how they are and how do they look because they orbit around the Mars, but their orbit is such that not much of the mission could get information. However, because of Indian Mars mission being a highly elliptical mission, we are able to image them from different sites. We could also get a lot of new information of Valles of Marinus. Now, this Valles of Marinus is the biggest canyon in the solar system. You must have heard about Grand Canyon in US, right? But this is much, much bigger than that. And it is completely filled with dust and cloud you are seeing currently over there. It's all, you know, this dust and clouds. But in different seasons, for example, now here, it is completely cleared. So that's why Mars sometimes get completely covered with dust, which is called dust storms on Mars. And that's why the seasons are highly dramatic. Or you can see these channels, which it call as Mangla Valleys. And that shows that there have been a flow of any fluid, most likely water, in the ancient past when the Mars was hot and wet. Currently, we believe Mars is cold and dry. The Menka experiment, on the Mangal uh, Yan or the Mars Orbiter mission has given for the first time how a carbon dioxide dominated atmosphere converts to an oxygen dominated atmosphere. Now, Mars is dominated by carbon dioxide, unlike Earth, which is dominated by nitrogen, 80% and about 20% oxygen. In Mars, it is 95% carbon dioxide. But as you go up in the atmosphere, somewhere around 250 to 260 kilometers, this CO2 dissociates and forms CO, C, and O. And O starts dominating. So this was the first study which told us that this conversion is happening at somewhere around 265 kilometers above the Martian surface in the evening time. And this has actually changed our understanding that there is a large difference in the sunlit or noon time to evening time atmosphere on Mars. Also, we discovered suprathermal argon. And this is more important in terms of talking about escape of Mars. Now, let me quickly go to Chandyan 2 mission, which was much more complex and complicated because it had a Wickham lander and a Pegian rover sitting inside the Wickham lander and the orbiter itself. We all know what all happened, so I'm not going to detail of that, but to tell you that the experiments, the eight experiments on the Chandyan 2 orbiter, they are working very well still for the last five years. And they have changed our understanding of the moon, more particularly the OHRC, which is optical high resolution camera. 
which is providing us information of about a feet resolution from 100 kilometer. This OHRC was actually used by India to decide the Chandrayaan-3 landing site. We also have other instrument, for example, the TMC, which has given a lot of new information, including the Sarabhai crater. So Dr. Vikram Sarabhai is a crater named after him on the moon, which is on the near side. So if you have a small telescope of like six or eight inches, you can actually see this crater. This is eight kilometer in diameter and about 1.7 kilometer deep. We also have other instrument like dual frequency SAR, which talks about beneath the surface. So we can probe what is happening to few meters beneath the surface of the moon. And other instrument which talk about hydration, argon distribution, elemental composition, and things like that. And uh, there's an instrument called XSM, which is actually looking at the sun to know what is coming from the sun in the energy range of 1 to 15 kV, which is called X-rays. So solar X is coming and hitting the lunar surface because it doesn't have an atmosphere, which is not possible on planet Earth because Earth has a huge atmosphere and they are all absorbed somewhere around 100 kilometer above the surface. Now let me go quickly to Chandyan 3 mission. This mission was more or less like a duplication of the Chandyan 2, but we did not want it an orbiter because Chandyan 2 orbiter is still in orbit. So we use the propulsion module and so that we can transfer some of the mass on the lander and inside the lander, of course, was the rover. And this mission, which is you seen over here in the stacked conditions, the lander sitting on the top, the propulsion module sitting down, it is a composite which was actually launched. And we had a fantastic launch on 14th of July, 2023, in the middle of the day. Do you want to see the launch? Let me show you. If it is possible, please confirm that you are able to see and listen. Can you confirm? Yes, sir. Can you see the movie? Yes, yeah, video is big. And the voice? Yes. Stop. No, no, no. Voice is not. Just the top of any rocket carrying India's prestigious Chandrayaan 3 spacecraft. Prefer tracking. Prajolan or Papantaku Uthapan LVM 3 M4 rocket car. So the this is the launch vehicle Mark 3. This is the heaviest lift off vehicle. Or yeah, the hard edge of a Yaniko romantic country. Being the heaviest lift off vehicle, this is also called the Bahubali. As the rocket is soaring through the clear sky, every second moving closer to the accomplishment of the most important milestone in its mission to move. So this is a small clip of about a minute showing the fantastic launch. Now this uh, lander and rover having experiments, and there were four experiments on the lander. ILSA for understanding the seismicity, that is the moonquake. CHASTE, which was a unique instrument going 10 centimeter into the lunar surface and looking at the temperature profiles. Langmuir probe, talking about the plasma distribution around the landing site at a height of two meters. And then we have a retro reflector from NASA. And on the rover, which actually moved onto the lunar surface, we have two instrument, AP access, that is alpha particle access spectrometer, and LIPS, which is basically a laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy, both looking at the elemental and mineralogy of the lunar surface. And on the propulsion module, we have an instrument called SHAPE, which is a spectropolarimetry for habitable planet on Earth, just to look from moon's orbit how the Earth looks like and how we can use this information to study exoplanets. And you all know what happened on the mission control day. We had the fantastic landing on 23rd of August, 2023, last year, which is now celebrated as National Space Day. And I will just show you a small clip of what happened on that day. This is just the last one minute of the clip. And I was also there. You can see me over here. I hope you can see me. We have the Kiran Kumarji. We have the ISRO chairman. And Prime Minister Modi ji was in South Africa watching us live. We are just uh, somewhere around 60 meters above the lunar surface with the two engines firing. 
we are almost vertical now two engines are now being fired so we are nearly at zero velocity vertical and horizontal we are we were hovering and now we are approaching the moon surface i hope you can listen to the voice right in the video so yes okay yeah. perfect so we are hardly 30 meters above the surface. You can see the Honorable Prime Minister. And in the mission control, we are used to get a lot of these pictures which are seeing in the middle panel, which is telling us where we are actually. The visual. We are about to land now. Yeah. Yes, we have landed. People are applauding. Let us all thank you, Chair, from the Secretary Department of Space and Chairman Isro C. S. Somna. Lander model Puri Sarase safely or softly Chandrama ke Sasape land ho chuka hai. Ye hamlo kiri Bahuti Garvati Vasai. हिंदी में एक कहावत है कि चंदा मामा दूर के लेकिन अब हमें कह सकते हैं कि चंदा मामा अपने घर के ओके सो वी हैव लैंडेड ऑन द मून इंडिया बिकेम द फर्स्ट नेशन टू लैंड इन द सदर्न हाई लैटिट्यूड रीजंस नोबडी हैज लैंडेड एट दैट लोकेशन एंड एवरीबॉडी आर सेलिब्रेटिंग आई आल्सो सेलिब्रेटेड विद द सेल्फी ऑफ विद द विक्रम एंड प्रज्ञान व्हिच वाज एक्चुअली देयर इन द मिशन कंट्रोल and how was the whole world celebrating? Let me show you. India has done it. It has become now the fourth country to land a spacecraft on the moon after the US and China and the former Soviet Union. Just moments ago, we're talking to this. India has made space history, becoming the first nation to soft land a spacecraft on the moon's South Pole. India has become the first nation to successfully land a spacecraft near the South Pole to the moon. The country's PM Narendra Modi has proudly the achievement, saying that mission success belongs to all of humanity. Spacecraft Chandrayaan 3 is attempting to become the first to land on the moon's south pole. Yeah, the first country in the world to land a spacecraft near the moon's south pole. A moment of history for the country. It was a tense final six minutes as it descended onto the lunar surface. Let's show you the moment. First of all, let's head to stage. Today is celebrating the successful moon landing of this Chandrayaan 3 spacecraft. Okay, now India's lunar probe, Chandrayaan 3, has landed on the moon's south pole. India is the first country to touch down on this part of the moon, which is believed to hold pockets. We begin with some historic news. India has become the first country in the world to successfully land a craft near the moon's south pole. Prime Minister Narendra Modi was watching the mission from South Africa and congratulated the team back home. Let's take a closer look at what. Okay, so this is how the whole world was celebrating the success of India and India being the first country in the world to land at this location. Now, Everybody was celebrating, but in the mission control, we were all very busy for the next step, which is taking out the rover, Pragyan sitting inside the lander, because we have experiment on the rover, which has to be performing on the lunar surface. So I will show you a small clip of how the Pragyan rover actually came out and start moving onto the lunar surface. So this is the ramp on which the rover is sitting. It is now coming down. You see the shadow on the right side, wheels, and look here, the emblem of India and the flag of India. And this is the touchdown. And this is how the rover start moving onto the lunar surface. And once the rover start moving onto the lunar surface, it is a time for all the scientists to do the scientific experiments. So this is how the Pragyan rover started moving and we started collecting data and we found uh, using the navigation cameras in front of the rover, a big crater in front. And we said, oh boy, this is too big. Our rover can't go through. So we started moving back and you are able to see now the tracks of the rover made 
by the, our Indian Pragyan rover onto the lunar surface. You could also see a selfie of the lander taken by the rover. So far you are seeing the images taken by the lander only. Now this is the image of the lander taken by the rover. And you can see very clearly that Indian Vikram lander is landing onto the lunar surface stationary. And here is the chassis instrument which has gone inside 10 centimeter. Here is the ILSA which is sitting on the lunar surface. And on the other side was an instrument called Ramba LP which has deployed and collecting science data. Now this location is called Shiv Shakti and this is now given officially by International Astronomical Union on the request of India and therefore the Chandyan 3 landing site is called Shiv Shakti point. I will show you one more clip of how this oops, rover was moving onto lunar surface as if a toy is moving but remember that this is happening on the moon being controlled by mission control in Bangalore. This is the rover moving. This is a movie made in 10 hours being shown to you in hardly 30 seconds. So every time the rover has to be parked, we make experiments, we collect scientific data, then the rover moves and then goes to the next location. We command the rover to move five meters or 10 meters, stops, we collect data. That's how the rover has moved 103.5 meters from the Shiv Shakti point. And if you see here, first we are going down. We saw a big crater over here. We went back and then finally scientists decided, no, we have to go into the west side because this big crater on the west side is much bigger and is a fresh crater. So we need to explore that and that's why we went to the other direction. Finally, now the Pragyan rover is parked over here and the Indian become lander is sitting at the Shiv Shakti point. Now these experiments, four of them on the lander and two of them on the rover has provided us very unique data. This is just a small summary slide giving you more details, but I will not go into too much detail of it except to tell you the chaste which has gone inside almost 10 centimeters has showed that the temperature is falling very fast as you're going inside the moon, as if the surface top few centimeter is highly known conducting. It is similar to when you take uh, a, a fall in temperature, which is measured by this instrument as it went down in the first uh, something like 60 or 70 centimeter I mean, millimeter that is 8 centimeter the temperature fall is about 50 degree centigrade 50 degree centigrade that means the top layer of the moon is highly known conducting which can actually be used for thermal blanketing the ilsa instrument which is for looking at the seismicity or seismic activities on the lunar surface whenever the rover was moving we are seeing signals very clearly in the ILSA instrument, which in turn is telling how these waves, sound waves is propagating onto the lunar surface. The Ramba LP, which is basically a plasma instrument looking at the electron and ion distribution at a height of two meter from the surface, has told us that is a dramatic changes which is happening over one lunar day. One lunar day is 14 Earth days, right? So how this plasma densities are changing and what is causing that? This was the first information of its kind. The LIPS, which looks at laser induced breakdown spectroscopy is talking about various elements present because of the multiple lines coming from the same element. But the APXS, alpha particle X-ray instrument has given us the first elemental composition at the landing site or around the landing site within 100 meters. It has detected sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, sulfur, potassium, calcium, titanium, chromium, manganese, iron, nickel, and also zinc. That means now we know what is the elemental composition at that location, which can now be converted into mineralogy, and how does it compare with locations at other places from where we have sample return missions. And it showed that 
this is a very unique location with a pyroxene to halloween ratios which are quite different but it is quite uniform and then there are a lot of work which you have carried out to understand what could be the sources of this and what could be the material which would have come to make this homogeneous because this location of landing of the Chandyan 3 is about 350 kilometer from South Pole Atkin Basin, which is the biggest crater in the whole solar system, and it is on the moon South Pole. So a lot of new science has come out from this, from this mission, both from the rover as well as on the lander. Now let me talk a little bit about Aditya L1 mission, which is currently operating at L1 point, and L1 point is a point between Sun and Earth. So you see sun in the center, earth going around the sun, and L1 point is just to one percent of the distance on the sun earth line. So it is very close to the earth, but it is four times far away than the moon. Okay. So moon is about what? Four lakh kilometer. So L1 point is about 16 lakh kilometer. But it is just one percent away from sun and earth. And this is, uh, mission, which has been working, launched on 2nd of September last year, 2023, reaching Allen Point on January 6th this year, has already made one orbit at Hello, which is called Hello Orbit. And the advantage with this is that Earth, when it goes around the Sun, the Allen Point is also going around the Sun. So Allen Point is not going around the Earth, so it is not obscured by uh, uh, the Earth. And therefore, I can see the sun continuously 24-7. There are various experiments on that, which is provided as excellent quality of data, and I'll not go into detail of that. What next? What is happening in the future? Now, we are talking about the Chandyan 4 mission, which is a sample return mission. That means, so far, we have gone and landed. We have collected the data with the instruments, which is sitting on the land and the rover. But now, our aim is to bring back the sample from the moon. And that's why this is going to be a very complex mission where we are talking about different launch vehicles, the PSLVs, the LVM R3s. There are different kinds of spacecraft like re-entry module, transfer module, ascend module, descend module, propulsion modules, because each activity has to be correlated with each other. And after landing, we have to collect, we have to launch back from the surface, come to the orbit of the moon. From orbit of moon, we have to come back to orbit of Earth. And from orbit of Earth, you have to come down on the surface of Earth. So it's going to be a very complex mission, highly challenging. And therefore, this is a, one of the biggest uh, complex mission which India is going to undertake. We are also working with the JAXA, that is Japan, to have another unique mission, which is going into the polar regions. Because moon, uh, what you call axis, is almost vertical, straight unlike Earth, which is 23 and a half degree tilt. And therefore, in the polar region of the moon, if you have any craters, then they will never see the light. And sunlight cannot reach because photons reach, uh, move in the straight line, right? So the idea is to go into those permanently shadowed regions, which never see the sunlight. And what is there? Because they are believed to be containing more water than anywhere else on the moon. And therefore, this unique mission between ISRO and JAXA, that is India and Japan, is going to take place, where ISRO is going to provide the lander and scientific experiments, and Japan is going to provide the rover and the launcher. What next? We are also talking about Venus mission, that is going to an orbit around the Venus, looking at the surface of Venus, Venus dust, volcanism, clouds, lightning, atmosphere, and of course, again, going back to Mars but not as an orbiter, but land on the Mars. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Venus in a couple of minutes. I hope I have time. Venus is a very, very different planet. The surface pressure of Venus is 90 bar. On Earth, the surface pressure is 1 bar. So that means something like 100 times more pressure on the surface of Venus. The temperature at the surface of Venus is 800 Kelvin, three times more than that on the Earth. And therefore, the surface is very hostile, absolutely hostile. You can't land, you will simply get burned. But when you go up in the atmosphere at an altitude of somewhere around 50, 60 kilometers, 
it is covered with clouds completely covered with clouds which are made of sulfuric acid h2so4 those who are science students must be knowing sulfuric acid is a, is a very dangerous acid right now you see an issue surface is so hot but when you go to the altitude of about 60 kilometers the temperature is something very close to the surface of earth pressure is very similar to that of the surface of earth so that means the conditions are very benign but this clouds completely cover the venus so we can't see the surface of venus in the visible that's why the image which you are seeing here of the venus is not the visible image it is an false color ultraviolet image because we can't see the surface in the visible light more recently phosphine has been discovered in the clouds of venus now phosphine is one of the indicator of some biological signatures or that means some kind of life in the clouds of venus of course there's a lot of still controversy going on but because the conditions are quite benign as the surface of the earth there could be life in the clouds of venus now you can imagine we are talking about life on planet earth and other planets and there could be life in clouds is it possible so therefore indian venus mission is going to be an orbiter which is going to look at many features of the venus understanding its interaction with the sun the solar wind the atmosphere lightning clouds and super rotation now, super rotation means venus is rotating very slow on its axis it has 120 days day 120 days night if you go to venus you have to sleep for 120 days and then work continuously for 120 days right and but the clouds which i just talking about at 50 60 kilometers they complete the one rotation around the venus in four days so that means the atmosphere is spinning much faster than the planet itself that is called super rotation now on the other side when you talk about mars and i just mentioned that mars is dominated by carbon dioxide venus is also dominated by carbon dioxide so how a planet earth is which is on the either side we have a planet mars on the outer side venus on the inner side both dominated by carbon dioxide but earth having nitrogen oxygen dominated atmosphere how is it possible is earth already passed through the phases which Mars and Venus are going or Earth can go to that phase where Mars and Venus are currently. So these are a lot of questions which you need to understand in addition to understanding whether life exists on these two planets. Mars we now know very well there could have been very clear signatures of water on the Mars in the past. Probably it exists even now. And therefore, it is more important to go to the surface rather than using an orbiter to do remote sensing. And that's why the Mars lander mission is going to be a follow-up mission from India, but it will be landing and looking at many features on the surface of the Mars. So with this, uh, let me like to thank you all for listening patiently. And if you have any questions, you can ask to me. Dhanyavad. Namaskar. Thank you, sir for an inspiring insight on space exploration conducted by ISRO. Thank you very much. Next, I invite Mrs. Padmini Nair, one of the founding member of SIF KSA and the examination controller for SPC examination in KSA. With a vast experience, she plays a key role in guiding students through the examination process with expertise and care. Here she is to conduct the question and answer session. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Ravita. A very good afternoon to all of you. I should firstly thank the students for their kind attention during the presentation on various space exploration programs, especially highlighting the work of ISRO scientists. Uh, now we move on to the question and answer session. However, we are running short of time and it is nearly the end of the school day. We need to be mindful of uh, transportation concerns for many students. To keep this moving efficiently, uh, we have a, a brief question answer session. I will keep the questions given to me concise so we can address as many as possible. 
The first question goes, and it is by IIS Jubail. Who designs and makes Gaganyan spacecraft? And why hasn't ISRO done a human space mission before? What challenges did they face? Okay, so Gaganyan stands for a program of ISRO, which is for taking humans to space. When you talk about human going to space, you have to keep in mind that you have to safely bring back the human on the ground, right? It is not a one way, right? It's a two way Sorry. ticket. You can take the presentation material. Can I remove the presentation? Okay. Yeah, it is remove. there. It is there. If oh, it's still out, there. Ah, okay. Now, fine. now it's better. Yeah. Okay, fine, Go ahead. fine. Now I can see. And I hope all of you can see better, right? Okay. So Gaganyan, as I was just mentioning, is, is a is a much more complex mission because humans have to go to the space. And for that, you have to qualify the rocket as human rated. In addition to that, you need to have systems and subsystem in place for human to be live. And for that, you need a space capsule, you need various subsystems for humans to come out in case of uh, any exigencies, and then safely bringing back the humans. And therefore, you need a lot of technologies to be developed within the country. Currently, ISRO is working on that. Very soon, you will be hearing about the first launch, which will be, of course, a robotic launch of the Gaganyan. And subsequent to that, in a couple of years, hopefully, we'll be having the first human from India going to space. Thank you, sir. The next question is from IIS Riyadh Boys. How does ISRO's slingshot technique for launching Chandrayaan-3 save costs and help it land on the moon's darker side? Okay, so slingshot is, uh, is something like a technique which we use for saving the fuel on the spacecraft. It is like that we don't want to send the spacecraft directly from the rocket to the planet either in the Mars mission or in the Chandrayaan missions. We want to go around the Earth, gain velocity so that we can go on a trajectory to the planet. When we were undertaking Mars mission, I can tell you that we went around the Earth for almost like a month, gaining the velocity because we had to escape the Mother Earth. That means we should have a velocity higher than 11.2 kilometer per second to escape Earth and go into a heliocentric orbit so that we can reach Mars. Now, these kind of uh, what you call uh, orbits are little time consuming, not much, but they give us a lot of advantage on the fuel. And that is why India has adopted this kind of schemes where we can have missions with a meager amount of capabilities for the launch. Thank you, sir. The next question from IISR Girls. What are ISRO's long-term goals for human space flight and space tourism? Ah, okay. So kids are interested to go to the space for tourism, right? As uh, Dr. Kiran Kumar was also talking about, you know, that the future lies with the youngsters and uh, India is talking about uh, having a roadmap of human landing of moon, uh, a human landing on the moon by 2040. And that is a mandate from the government. So you, we are talking about in 2024, 25 time frame. So another 15 years down the line, we are going to have human landing onto the moon. And once you have that, only you can talk about tourism for moon. But you must have also heard about India talking about Bharti and Six Station, which is a space station around Earth and which can be used as a platform for tourism. So probably 10 years down the line, the youngsters who are in now 9th to 10th or 12th grade can expect when they will be doing the jobs or becoming uh, scientists, they may expect to go on a tour in space. That sounds interesting. Next, we have a question from IIS Kavji. What major challenges did ISRO counter while developing its first satellite launch vehicle? 
Oh, I think Dr. Suresh are there, is there. Dr. Suresh, can you answer this question better than me? <laughs> yeah, very, very much. You know, it's, it's uh, always called uh, rocket science. You know, there are many, many disciplines have to work like propulsion, the structures, control and guidance, the avionics and many other things. Uh, in fact, we did fail in the very first attempt. And for the benefit of all students, uh, this whole project was headed by none other than Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. He was the project director. And we have to really face number of failures in each one of them while developing, putting them together. With all that, when we launched uh, somewhere in the July 1979, we failed. But then we are able to uh, rectify. Ultimately, it was found that one small speck of dust which was sitting in one of the walls created this problem and then that happened. So that's why it is very difficult to really succeed in rocket science. And uh, that's one of the reasons and also very expensive. One of the reasons that uh, all, over the con all over the globe, only few countries are developing the launch vehicles. Okay. So essentially Dr. Suresh was talking, failure is a step to success. Thank so you, never sir. get deterred by failures. Yeah, that's a yes. very good message for students. Anything you do, right. failure is the only place where you can learn lessons much right. better than always succeeding. Uh, now we come on to the last question, IIS Jiddah. What's the next big challenge for ISRO after Chandrayaan 3? And how can students help with it? Oh, very good question. I have already given you an answer that India is going to have the Chandrayaan 4 mission, which is going to be a very, very complex mission so far attempted by ISRO and India, where we are talking about five different uh, modules of the whole mission, two launch vehicles, everything going into unisons and docking and undocking. Now, how children can help? What children has to do is to think what are the areas in which they have expertise. Now you were talking about what kids will have an expertise. They have, they have thought process. And kids should actually think whether things can be done differently. And ISRO is attempting to excite kids in many ways, which includes, of course, throwing challenges like hackathon, where we give challenge to students to come out with different ideas. For example, how a rover can move onto the surface of Mars, how a rover can move on the surface of moon. Is we, do we need only six vehicle, six wheel rover, or we can have eight wheel rover or a four wheel rover. Or for example, how do we bring the sample back to the earth? The technologies which you are developing is of course very complex, but the thought process from nuances or basically those who are not biased by the opinions of experts sometimes bring new thought into the whole game or whole programs. And that is where the kids can contribute. And ISRO has been very actively working on these areas to enthuse the kids, to throw challenges to the kids to think. And if they are able to think, probably they can also contribute. Secondly, you have to do your best in your studies, achieve the goals in terms of your excellence in studies, and go for highly specialized areas, wherever you feel like. And in space science and space technologies, you need people from all branches of science, technology, and engineering. You name it, it is required. Dr. Suresh was just mentioning about, you know, propulsion, chemical, mechanical, electrical, electronics, material science, chemistry, physics, maths, biology is now coming, space, medicine, human and space programs, means a space biologist, medical science, food technology, space food, any branch, and including now tourism, economy, law, management, you name anything, it is required in space. So only thing is you have to excel in your schools. Thank you. Uh, we would like to inform the school and the students that 
you have sent us a whole lot of questions and we would request our host to please look into this and if they could give an answer to this it would be highly appreciated thank you so much i would like to thank dr vn suresh kumar dr as kiran kumar and dr anil bharatwaj for explaining each and everything which was asked so beautifully thank you so much thank you ma'am uh, now uh, we move on to the felicitation speeches first we have mr anwar sadan higher board member uh, kingdom of saudi arabia a strong pillar of hope for the students of the community schools sir welcome Please unmute, sir. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Respected Chief Guest, Dr. Kiran Kumar, Padma Bhushan, Dr. B. N. Suresh, Honorable Dr. Anil Bharatwaj, esteemed Sri Dinesh Chaitya, First Secretary, Embassy of India, Riyadh, Office Bearers of SIF, KSA, Pan IAS distinguished faculty, students, and fellow space enthusiasts. It is both a privilege and an honor to be here today as we inaugurate this remarkable initiative. This event marks the beginning of an extraordinary journey, one of that will spark curiosity, innovation, and a sense of boundless possibility among young minds. In recent years, we have witnessed remarkable advancements in space exploration. And India has been at the forefront of this global moment. From Chandrayaan's successful missions to discovery of water on the moon, to the remarkable Mars Orbiter mission, MOM, ISRO has captured the world's imagination with its ingenuity and resilience. These feats were not achieved by chance, but by a team of visionaries, scientists, and engineers who were once students just like you filled with dreams of exploring the vast expanse of universe. Today, as we inaugurate this space club, we are taking a step towards nurturing next generation of dreamers, thinkers, and explorers. This club will serve as a platform for students to delve deeper into the world of space science, foster their curiosity, and challenge their creativity, whether it's through hands-on activities, discussions about recent space missions, or engaging with experts in the field, you are setting the foundation for the future. I want to emphasize that space is not about rockets and satellites. It's about understanding our place in the universe, finding solutions to the to challenge here on Earth, and inspiring hope for a better future. Through this initiative, we aim to encourage you, the youth of today, to become leaders in innovation and exploration. You are the future scientists, engineers, and thinkers who will push the boundaries of what we know and what we believe is possible. This collaboration with ISRO brings an incredible opportunity to Indian students in Saudi Arabia to connect with one of the world's most esteemed space organizations to learn directly from the best minds and to be inspired by the vast potential that space holds for humanity. We are confident that this club will serve as a bridge between cultures and nations and ultimately between Earth and the stars. I urge all students to take full advantage of this opportunity. Let your imaginations soar. Don't be afraid to ask questions, to explore the unknown and to dream big. Space is infinite and so are your possibilities. In closing, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to ISRO, Embassy of India, and Science India Forum Saudi Arabia, and the school authorities for making this collaboration a reality. And to the students, remember that the sky is not the limit, it's just the beginning. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing the incredible discoveries that will emerge from here in the years to come. Godspeed. Thank you very much, sir, for your words. Uh, next, I invite the principal of International Indian School, Mrs. Meera Rehman. Riyadh. 
Thank you, Dr. Ramita. Eminent scientist of ISRO, observer of all the international schools, Embassy of India, Dinesh Sethi Sir, respected high rank member of all ISS in KSS, and Masadat Sir, science India Forum, Mr. Vijayapuram Shiri, and other respected members of science India Forum, principal sir, and the also girl of the academic year. It's an honor to be here today at this remarkable event connected to the students of the area with the building of ISR. The opportunity to engage with one of the world's leading student research organizations is indeed a blessing and a privilege for the young minds in all 10 international schools in KSA. I'm sure that this practice session will inspire and inspire curiosity of our students. I take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to today's sir and Anwar for permitting families to attend those significant events. Thank you, sir. I applaud Science in the Forum for organizing this practice session. This is not only a celebration. Of scientific achievement, but it nurtures the spirit of science system. At the very least, I have a humble request to ISR. I want certain things and allow the person to ISR. The student achievement may be a big club combination. This will indeed be an honor to them. So, ISR members will be successful. I wish to say that interactive research like this one of the world's leading space research organizations, ISR, which inspires the world to think science and innovate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now I invite Mr. Sunil Peter, International Indian School. The mom principal. Over to you, sir. Mr. Irfan Wahid is the in place of Mr. Singh. Yes, yes. Distinguished guests from Isro, Dr. B.N. Suresh, Dr. Kiran Kumar. And Professor Bardwaj, respected Dinesh uh, Sedia, sir, first secretary of Embassy of India, Mr. Anwar Sadar, member of the higher board, all the officials of organizing team Science India Forum, dear colleagues, principals of international Indian schools, staff, and students. Good afternoon. I am very happy and excited after attending this inaugural session of establishment of space clubs in international Indian schools in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia with the help of Science India Forum in collaboration with ISRO. It's a good it's opportunity a good for all the students who are studying miles away from motherland India, India in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Arabia. and they are not they are getting that much opportunity compared to a students those who are studying in India to attend different programs, activities, and get involved in all kind of programs related to space. I am extremely thankful to the members of Science India Forum for taking this initiative for providing such opportunity where more and more activities we are going to organize in our schools, which will create a special interest for the students in space study. Thank you so much. 
once again i am extremely thankful to higher authorities and the organizers for providing such opportunity thank you thank you sir uh, i now invite dr imran khan principal international indian school jeda thank you dr rabika uh, uh, honorable scientists from isro uh, officials of science media forum asa Uh, honorable uh, school observer mr dinesh setia respected high board member mr anur sadat all fellow principals from different part of saudi arabia teachers and their students good afternoon everyone indeed it was a great session it, it was a great event rather i must say that uh, which is organized in collaboration with uh, sef and uh, isro and the initiative taken by the embassy of india riyadh in uh, in collaboration with the higher board members is indeed uh, a long way to go and uh, of course this is a this is a this will definitely open up a new platform for our students to explore uh, what are the uh, happenings in space technology and space research and uh, the kind of a presentation which was uh, given by professor Anil Bardwaj was quite, uh, you know, interesting, and I, I, I'm sure that all the students who have attended this program from different parts of Saudi Arabia might have taken a great lesson that uh, there are a lot of opportunities for each and every student to to utilize this area of space technology and make a career. As far as the the introduction of a space club is concerned, that is also a very noble. and a uh, wonderful initiative by science india forum ksa uh, i i am pretty sure that uh, this kind of uh, clubs will definitely pave a way for students uh, interest in the field of science and technology and this will open up new vistas of opportunities for our children thank you sef for having this event and inviting over all of us i i know that the children are waiting for so long and they, this is time for them to depart from the school and thank you everyone who has been the part of this great event and uh, from the isj i must express that we are going to give you full support our children will be the, in the front lead to take part in this you know uh, space club inshallah thank you have a great day ahead sir thank you sir uh, next we have mr alam gir islam principal international indian school jubair thank you dr ramita for inviting eminent space scientists from isro respected observer sir mr dinesh setia honorable hb member mr anwar sadad principals of international indian schools in the kingdom colleagues and my dear students a very good afternoon to one and all i remember that when i first took over as a principal and the first meeting that i had with science india forum it was a request that if we can set up a space club and a robotics club in the kingdom and i am really wonderfully surprised to see that such an initiativeness has come at a such a short span of time and i am really thankful for this wonderful coordination that has come up i am thankful to science india forum for setting up the space club in the school in collaboration with iias uh, with isro sir on behalf of my school management committee and the entire is jubel fraternity i would ex like to extend my warm regards and thanks to dr shuresh dr kiran kumar and dr anil bhardwaj for sparing your valuable time to nurture and make our students to dream and know more about space the fire and the passion of knowledge that ignited today in our children's mind will surely go a long way in building the next generation of new digital india i am very sure and confident that in the near future many students from the indian schools in the kingdom will follow your footsteps and join isro our nation's pride thanks once again to one and all for giving this wonderful opportunity to my beloved students wish you all the best 
Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your words. Next, I invite Mr. Santosh Prabhakaran, Principal, International Indian Public School, Riyadh. The most respectful chief guest, Dr. A.S. Kiran Kumar, former chairman of ISRO, Mr. Dinesh Setia, first secretary of information, culture, and education embassy of India, Mr. Biju Mullasedi, Science India Forum National President KSA, Dr. Anil Bharadwaj, the speaker of the day, Director of Physical Research Laboratory, ISRO, Mr. Anwar Sadat, Higher Board Member, KSA, Principal of various Indian schools in Saudi Arabia, entire team of ISRO. Good afternoon, everyone present here. Today, we are witnessing an inspiring initiative by the Science India Forum in collaboration with ISRO that aims to ignite the passion for space science among our students. I would like to extend my heartfelt appreciation to the Science India Forum for their unwavering commitment to promoting scientific knowledge and innovation in our schools. Your dedication to nurturing young minds is truly commendable. A special thanks to ISRO for partnering in this remarkable venture, your achievement in space exploration inspire us all. We all are proud of you. We are proud of the nation. We are proud of our the research institution. Your support will undoubtedly empower our students to dream big and explore the universe. Together, we are fostering a culture of curiosity and creativity, encouraging our students to reach for the stars. Thank you for making this vision a reality. Let us embark on this exciting journey into the cosmos, inspiring the next generation of scientists and explorers. Thank you all for this great opportunity. Have a wonderful day. Over to Dr. Ramita. Thank you, sir. Next, we have Mr. Lawrence Burgis, Principal, International Indian School, Buraida. Thank you, Dr. Remida, and good afternoon to all the distinguished uh, guests and uh, the keynote speaker. Really, this is a wonderful opportunity granted to all the students under Embassy of India to have an, a forum wherein they are able to join Space Club. Space was once considered as something unattainable, unknown. Now, the scientists, especially for Indians, it is the ISRO, which mooted all the plans and succeeded in sending the spacecrafts and now everything is explored and we are on the road to envisage more and more in the field of space and science. Now the ISRO has extended a hand to involve the students into this exploration arena, wherein the students will be greatly influenced and they will develop a habit of research so that the entire student community in the Saudi in Saudi Arabia will be benefited and special thanks to the ISRO team present here today, and also the, the SIF, the Science India Forum, who made this event possible. I must thank the Embassy of India, our, our observer, sir, Mr. Dinesh Setia, and the higher board member, Mr. Anwar Sadat, to support in this event, along with the other principals I extend best wishes for this initiative, the Space Club, and assure that the International Indian School Buraida will be in the forefront of joining all the activities conducted by Science India Forum with regards to Space Club. Once again, I appreciate the keynote speaker, the 
special guest lecture given by Dr. Anil Aradwaj and everyone else who had spoken great about this event. And thank you all. Have a great day ahead. Thank you very much, sir. Next, we have uh, Mrs. Nasni Kareem, uh, Principal International Indian School, Kafji. Over to you, ma'am. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Honorable Dr. B. N. Suresh, Chancellor, IST. Uh, Dr. A. S. Kiran Kumar, former chairman, ISRO. Mr. Dinesh Sitai, first secretary of information, culture, and education. Mr. Biju Mulasari, SIF national president, KSA. Dr. Anil Bhardwaj, director, physical research laboratory, ISRO. And Mr. Anwar Sadat, high board member, KSA. Good afternoon to one and all present today. It's a great honor to address all of you to this exciting and inspiring event organized by India Science Indian Forum, where we gather to exchange ideas, spark curiosity, and celebrate the spirit of discovery. I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to all the distinguished speakers, panelists, for your dedication to advancing science. Your contribution not only enriched the scientific community, but also shaped the future of our world. APJ Abdul Kalam once said, look at the sky, we are not alone. The whole universe is friendly to us and conspires only to give the best to those who dream and work. This was an amazing and well entertained and well informative uh, uh, presentation given by Mr. Dr. Anil Bhardwaj. Let, let's make the most of this opportunity to learn, to engage, and to connect with each other. Together, we can continue to push the boundaries of science and create a better tomorrow. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you, ma'am. Next, we have uh, Mr. Syed Mohammad Shaukat, Principal, International Indian School, Majma. Good afternoon, Good afternoon, everyone. I sincerely thank SIF and ISRO for their invaluable collaboration in educating our students. I also thank organizer, observer of embassy, Mr. Dinesh Sekhi, Dinesh, the higher board member, Arva Sadat, Mr. Anil Bhardwaj, and all the members, those who have presented the speech, in the field of education and space research. Definitely, we will follow the guideline of SIF for improving the knowledge of our students in the field of space and research. Thank you once again, all the members, all the part participants, all the people, those who have given the knowledge and space lecture. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Next, we have Mrs. Ruma Aman. Principal International Indian School, Taif. He's not there. Okay. Uh, next, we have Mr. Mohammed Abdul Bakku, uh, Principal International Indian School, Tabuk. Even uh, Tabuk is awesome. Aranga, please move to the. Uh, so I think uh, with this felicitation speeches are over. Now I invite uh, Mrs. Padmini Nair to deliver the vote of thanks. A very good afternoon to the esteemed dignitaries from ISRO, the observer of the Embassy of India, respected principals from various schools, coordinators, 
students, SIF officials, and all our distinguished guests who have joined us today. As we come to the close of this inspiring event, it's my privilege to extend sincere gratitude to all those who have made this possible. First and foremost, my deepest gratitude to Dr. B.N. Suresh Kumarji, Dr. A.S. Kiran Kumar, and Dr. Anil Bharatwaj for sharing their invaluable knowledge and insights. Your contribution have ignited a spark of curiosity and wonder in the hearts of our students. A big thanks to you, Mr. Anwar Sadat, our visionary board member, and to all the esteemed principals for your unwavering support, leadership, and commitment to this incredible initiative. To our amazing students, thank you for your enthusiasm, your passion, and your wonderful participation today. You are the future of science and space exploration, and your engagement has truly made this event shine. A special thanks to the coordinators, teachers, and schools for working hand in hand with us, ensuing the seamless execution of this event. Your tireless efforts have made today a great success. Lastly, to ISRO and SIF KSA, thank you for bringing this ground breaking initiative to life and for giving our expatriate students this exceptional opportunity. With that, I once again express my heartfelt thanks to all. Let's continue to reach for the stars. Thank you. That concludes the show today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Surak sir. So the meeting is over. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. I think it was a grand success. Let us meet once again in month of December. But before that, we will have one more meeting, sometime convenient to both of us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please take care. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye bye, all. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.